You have probably already all heard about the Mika regulation, a cornerstone of the future rules that will apply to financial services linked to crypto assets and to the issuance of this type of assets. While some activities in this area are already subject to regulation, from an AML perspective in particular, Mika will now trigger a real shift from an unregulated space to comprehensive regulation with amongst others authorization requirements and rules of conduct in order to protect investors and the markets, but also to provide enhanced legal certainty in this space and to foster innovation. The regulation will apply to crypto assets, which are broadly defined as a digital representation of a value or a right, which may be transferred and stored electronically using distributed ledger technology or similar technology. It will apply to classical virtual currencies, but in particular apply to three specific types of crypto assets, for which specific rules will also apply. Asset reference tokens, i.e. tokens purporting to keep a stable value by their link to underlying assets. E-money tokens, i.e. tokens purporting to keep a stable value by their link to an official currency. And finally, utility tokens, i.e. tokens intended to provide access to a good or service. Importantly, it does however not apply to crypto assets that qualify as financial instruments within the meaning of MIFID. A number of other exclusions apply, for example products qualifying as deposits. Even if important areas are thus excluded from Mika's scope, it is nevertheless a blueprint for EU regulation in the crypto area and deserves due attention. Now, the Mika regulation contains several types of regulations actually, and which in our view can be grouped into two main pillars. A first pillar consists in a set of rules applying to services provided in relation to crypto assets, uh, including licensing requirements for crypto asset service providers, organizational rules and rules of conduct. And then a second uh, pillar concerns a set of rules applying actually more to issuances and offers of crypto assets, including this time licensing requirements for issuers of assets, in particular of asset reference tokens and electronic money tokens, rules applying to offers of crypto assets to the public and admission to trading of crypto assets, as well as the market abuse regime. The rules will not only affect the typical crypto asset players, but also traditional financial providers like banks, electronic money institutions, asset managers uh, that wish to offer services in this space. Now, let's have a look at the first pillar. What are the crypto asset services covered by Mika regulation? As you might expect, you have custody and administration of crypto assets, exchange for fiat currency or other crypto assets, execution of orders, reception and transmission of orders, the operation of a trading platform, portfolio management, and the provision of investment advice as well as the placing of crypto assets. Specific governance, organization and own funds and other requirements apply to crypto asset service providers. So these providers will need to operate in a more structured way with detailed policies and procedures and under documentation and systems. A considerable advantage, however, is that they will benefit from the EU passport and that the crypto asset provider will thus be able to service the entire EU market out of Luxembourg on a cross-border basis. Another key aspect is that traditional finance service providers like credit institutions, central securities depositories, investment firms, market operators, e-money institutions, management companies of USITs and AFIMS will also be able to provide these crypto asset services, provided amongst others that they follow a notification procedure. A restrictive approach is however taken with respect to non-EU providers which will need to rely on reverse solicitation and will thus have an incentive to establish, to establish a crypto asset provider in Europe. With respect to the second pillar, which relates more to capital market type activities of issuance and offerings of crypto assets, note that detailed rules will apply in relation to the publication of white papers, which are the equivalent of prospectuses in the traditional finance world. These white papers will need to have specific contents and be filed with supervisory authorities. Depending on the type of crypto assets, specific licensing, reserve and other requirements will apply to issuers. Finally, rules on insider dealing and market manipulation will also apply.
Now, after having reached a provisional agreement on the text for the proposed regulation, the European Council and Parliament will now need to formally adopt the text, which is expected for the first quarter of 2023. Most sections of MiCA will, however, only apply 18 months after its entry into force, some even after 12 months, so that there is still some time to prepare. However, as you know, post movers always have an advantage, so please feel free to get in touch with us so that we can help you to properly prepare and so that you are able to operate as soon as the new regime applies.